Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of BS for Build. In today's episode, it's time to finally try driving my MK4 Supra. So I actually went to Japan to get this car and it was pretty badly crashed. Front end damage, fender damage, bumper, rear quarter panel. Definitely took a spinny type of hit. By the time it got stateside to America, the car didn't even run anymore. So we started by replacing the fuel pump and testing out the car to make sure it ran. And then we replaced all the front end materials like the core support, the new fenders, new front bumper to get it all back to perfect OEM steel. We took a short journey into wide body world but we came right back and ended up with an OEM quarter panel replacement to keep the body at the OEM width. And in our last episode we dyno tested this car to make sure the engine pulls strong, it sounds great, and in this episode it's time to finally test drive this car. Make sure it stops, starts, steers, runs through the gears perfectly. We need to make sure that the drivability is, is dialed in on this car before we go into the final stages of the build. That's what's in store, stay tuned. Before I get down to work, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Simply Safe. Simply Safe is just the best in home security. I love using it because it gives me peace of mind. We've worked really, really hard on our creations, and I like knowing that they're protected. And Simply Safe has awesome 24/7 home monitoring protection by live Simply Safe agents who are ready at any time to dispatch to police or firefighters or EMTs in case of an emergency. And that protection costs less than a dollar a day, which is half of the cost of traditional home security brands. And there's no long-term fees or contracts, so you can start or stop anytime you want. And one of the really cool things about Simply Safe is how easy the setup is. It gets shipped directly to your door, so you don't have to make a service appointment or something like that. You set it up yourself. It takes less than, I did this whole shop in about 15 minutes. Normal house takes less than 30 minutes. I did my house in 10 minutes, a little proud of that. And one of my other favorite things is you don't have to run hard wires all through your house, but the batteries don't sit there and die every other day either. Very, very easy to maintain. It's really, really serious home security, but it's designed in such a way that it's easy to install yourself and it's easy to manage, and that's what I really love. I was looking for a company that made something like Simply Safe forever, and once I finally found it, I was hooked. And I mean, I've been a customer for I think over three years now and have it installed absolutely everywhere I go. So if you're ready to up your home security game, which I think you should, visit my URL at the top of the description. It's also on the screen right here. You can save 20% on your Simply Safe home security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and you'll get your first month free. Like I said, it's right here on the screen. Visit simplysafe.com slash BS for build. Link is also in the top of the description. Huge thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring another episode. Let's get down to work. So since the last time that you guys saw this car, we've done a small amount of work just by actually really bolting things down and bolting things to each other. A lot of before these scenes were just zip tied things together and in place and stuff like that. Now we have things, for instance, like the hood is actually latched in there. The bumper's actually bolted down. Fender's bolted down. Side skirt's actually bolted down. So this car's ready to drive at speed and have a good thorough testing. That's the only work that we've done to it off camera. And I think we're ready to drive. There's an R35 GTR blocking my way. That's why we have two bay doors. The GTR is visiting this shop while we do some slight modifications. Nothing, nothing to worry about. We might have stole parts off of it for the R3069. Where is that car? And now it's getting some nice upgraded replacement parts. That's all. That's all that's going on. And maybe its wheels are out for refinishing again the second time. That's all. That's all that's going on. Okay, Oscar, we drive? Let's drive it. Let's drive. Well. TJ Hunt's tires, I don't, I don't even care about them. This does not matter. Okay, yeah, we have a slight uh, scraping problem. I did not last long. All right, back in the shop. Uh, slight trimming needs to be made. So um, TJ picked a pretty aggressive tire size for this, but I've actually looked into all the different wheel size combos and tire sizes. And the, the size that we're gonna run in the long run with our Nitto tire also requires a bit of trimming. It's not uncommon. Um, a lot of people like to roll the inside of the fender, um, but it's a double thick piece of steel and it can cause um, like baconing, like um, weird crinkling in the outer skin and, and chipping and then like popping of the paint. So that's really bad. So uh, I've seen better results with people doing a nice little trim on the inside of that line. So we're gonna go ahead and trim out a little bit of space and give it another shot. ourselves a little bit more space. Let's go try it again. See if it is enough space. And we're back. 
Time to trim out a little bit more. Looks like there's a tail end that we haven't trimmed out and we're also gonna use a uh, adjustable suspension. We're gonna raise up the back about a quarter inch. Once we get our final set of tires on here, we'll be able to lower it back down again, but for now it's gotta go up a little bit. Does it sound like fire to you, Oscar? Just a little? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. We didn't drive it that hard. No. I don't see smoke, so that's usually a good sign. I know where a couple fire extinguishers are. We just put insurance on this thing today, so it would be really funny if uh, after owning it for four years across two continents, we burnt it down on the first test drive. All right, added negative metal, raised it up an extra finger width. I think we're gonna be good there. One more thing uh, that we're gonna go ahead and do, it's it's hot outside, it's 95 degrees outside. That's like 34, 33 Celsius. The car's doing fine with just the airflow going through the radiator, but if we hit traffic, we need the fan to kick on. So there is a electric fan, here's the pigtail for it. Um, and that was built into the OEM radiator shroud. And then here is the other end of that pigtail. I'm gonna go ahead and wire this up to one one of our single fans for now and then we're gonna go ahead and pull it out front let it run let the engine heat up and test that it's gonna kick on if it does work then it'll work for today and then in the long run when we're doing all of our hardcore modification we'll set up a full relay system so it kicks onto a relay dedicated engine power to power both the fans but for now it's all about that shakedown it's about getting these tests going and we're gonna test this guy out We brought the car outside to do the test after I wired this thing up, wired it up, plugged it in. We got the car nice and hot and the fan never kicked on. So I'm assuming that fan and this wiring has to do with the uh, AC system. So we need to figure out how we're gonna trigger with the stock ECU, how we're gonna trigger our fans at the right temperature. That's something we're gonna have to figure out. If anybody knows, leave a comment below, like the, the kind of normal way to do this. People have been modifying these cars for so long and going electric fan, I'm sure there's an easy way to do it. Um, rather than doing an inline thermostat, I don't wanna do the inline thermostat running to the to a relay anyways so that's not gonna work for now I'm just gonna go ahead and run a hard wire with a, a little clicky switch and click it on cool this car back down before we go for a drive all right we're out driving to Supra there's so much built-up rust on the rotors that it's like makes a constant sound every rotation but as I use the brakes a little bit that'll wear off I've never really made it much of a secret that I don't love driving right-hand drive because if you do it a lot, you start to really understand where you're at on the road, but when you do it just occasionally uh, for a nice, fun, spirited drive, I really don't know exactly where the left-hand side of my vehicle is, and I tend to stay a little bit too far to the right, but practice will bring improvements. A little rub test here. We're not rubbing. Looking pretty good. So we raised the, the ride height a little bit, kind of looks a little bit silly. God, the turbo sounds are so good. Um, we raised the right height. It's about two fingers now over the tire. We could definitely bring it back down now because we trimmed out more. So I think we're safe on our, um, on our wheel spec with our width and everything. It's going to be just fine. Could have spent a little more time cleaning my windshield, but I'll manage. One thing I'm finding out from this shakedown here is we need to bleed the brakes out a little bit more. There's a little bit of air in there. We actually found a damaged line in the right uh, left. Did I just say right left? The rear left. Uh, we found a damaged line that we had to replace. So it looks like there's probably a little bit of air in there. It just feels like it's a little more spongy than it should be. So with the air box being deleted, you can really hear when this thing spools up. turbo goodness but it puts a smile on your face that's for sure once we switch to single turbo it's gonna get even better cars doing really well at speed our alignment could use a little work we'll dial that in there at the shop but man it's going through the gears good it's braking good it's boosting good I'm happy I saw Oscar over there smiling at me all right let's bring this baby back to the shop give it a once over all right, not a bad shakedown. I mean, the car is really, really fun to drive, which is a huge bonus. It's gonna be so much faster. I'm really excited for how that's gonna feel. 
Um, and we've identified just a few small things that we need to buy and do to really have it like driving at tip top shape. So that's perfect. Now you guys, I've been wanting to talk with you guys, the viewers about colors. Reason being, I always used to pick the colors from my vehicles. Um, like I picked uh, that, that color and um, you know, it's gone all right. But uh, I, I took your guys' advice on that car right there. And we went with the midnight purple and I thought I was never, ever, ever gonna do that. But you guys convinced me to do it. And I ended up being so, so happy with it. So I think your guys' advice tends to break me out of my shell a little bit. And then I end up with cars that I really, really love based on your guys' opinion. So it's kind of the opposite of what happens normally when you ask the internet about how to do a car. <laughs> So, I got the guys here, I'm gonna put the laptop on the roof, and we're gonna talk, we're gonna go over some colors with you guys. All right, we've decided we're gonna put the picture right, 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 right down here that we're looking at on the computer. So the thing about Supras is so many of them have been built that you can actually just jump online and find almost a picture of a Supra in any color that you could think of. So, I pulled up a bunch of colors that I thought were pretty cool, and let's talk about them. So first one, baby blue, it's kind of, that's actually really, really similar to the Datsun, which I didn't really realize. I don't. I thought that's what you had done. No, <laughs> I don't really want two cars that are the same color, so I'm, I, yeah. I like the color, I just don't think we need another one. Yeah, I don't think we need two of them. Uh, and the next one is one that was really highly recommended in the comments. It's, it's more of a gunmetal. It's like this silver color, but you just bring it down a little bit darker. I just call it gunmetal silver. Mm -hmm. I really like it, although it nice. shares a lot of tones with our wheels. Our wheels are almost basically this color with a little bit more brown, and I'm not resurfacing and refinishing these wheels. As we talked about, we already got our hands full refinishing the GTR wheels. So I like it, but I don't know. I think there might be other colors that work better with these wheels. It's a good color. It is a great mm -hmm. color. And that's a factory color that Supers yeah. came in. Next one is Oscar's favorite. Yeah. Um, and this car is pretty much specced out the same way that this car is here. And this is a candy apple red, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah, yeah me I, too. I like I this I thought a Oscar lot. was wrong when he said it, but after seeing the picture, it's, it's nice. It, it's, this like car that. looks really, really good in candy apple red. I think if we we're ever going to do a car in candy apple red and that the, the color of the wheels with a little bit of brown in it mm -hmm. really complements the candy mm -hmm. apple red really, really well. And this car actually looks cool with the exposed black vents as well. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, it, it doesn't take away from it too much because I think because the candy's kind of dark, it, it, it brings in en enough of the darkness. So that's it's high on my list. Next one is a blue color. I don't know the exact color of this. So, I mean, it's a dark glossy blue and the Supra did come, uh, uh, it, uh, just a few of them were made in a really deep dark blue color like the one we're showing here. Um, I don't know the name of this color. I, I should know it. That's the one that just sold on auction for $230,000 with an automatic transmission. <laughs> Twin turbo automatic, 230K. I think a lot of it was because it was a very rare factory blue color. I think this color also looks pretty awesome, but I think I like red more. It brings Ferrari vibes to me. It kind of like it's probably California vibes yeah. to me. Yeah. Uh, next one, Nardo Gray. I'm, uh, I think Nardo Gray's uh, Kind of had its time in the and yeah. the I I don't I, I like something with a little bit more flake in it. I like the darker for this color. Uh, factory red is a good color. It's a nice color, but but I'd say candy yeah, apples. Not, yeah, 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 it makes it bounce a little bit more. Um, I like this one. What do you guys think about this one? So you do the exposed carbon fiber hood, and then you do the Fast and the Furious Eclipse green. I love it. <laughs> we already have a lime green car. That's you know. oh yeah. I do have a lime green Lamborghini <laughs> right there, and then it would basically match. But this, oh man, this car would look cool in that. But we do, yeah. I guess we've set a rule now that you can't, you can't have, have two. The same you can't color. have two of the same color. Damn it. Okay. Last but not least is Alpine Silver Metallic, which actually is the color that the car is right now. Now. This color is one of the most common colors that the Super came in, that this generation of Super came in. And it's also um, really, you see it on a lot of stock Supras. So it tends to just come off initially as, that's a little bit boring. Yeah. But once you add in the body modifications that we've already done, when you got a rear diffuser, aftermarket side skirts, aftermarket front lip, front bumper, it really does start to bring the colors out more. Um, you can see this car has a lot, a lot of good photos that you can really see. And it, it helps show the angles a lot, which I yeah. really, really like. And I mean, we're going to have that carbon fiber running yeah. along the side skirts. Yeah, we'll, we'll have the black. carbon fiber lower. But it, and uh, this has the same wheel color uh, combo, basically. Like our wheels are obviously a different shape, but they are the same color. And I think the combo looks really good. Yeah, it matches nicely. And uh, 
there was just a lot of comments that I saw where people said, keep it the same silver. And I, I originally thought, no way am I gonna keep it the same silver. And then I saw these pictures of this car and thought, wow, once it's lowered and it's not on stock wheels with stock front bumper, this color is kind of banging. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about this too is when you're driving in a city, we live in a city, uh, it reflects all the colors bouncing off of signs of, of stoplights and everything like that because these silver colors are, act more like a mirror and um, it, it really does look pretty cool. Yeah. So you guys in the comments, please let us know what you think. And there is one big caveat. There's one big thing that um, is interesting. Obviously, our baby here is uh, multiple colors, right? We got black fiberglass, black primer, uh, more black fiberglass, carbon fiber, white, everything like that. To do a restoration, I can't really just throw a wrap on here. We're not gonna paint the entire car a serious color change, because it will it'll epically kill the value of this car. If you're gonna do a full color change, you gotta rip every single little bit out of this car till it's down to a bare chassis, bare body, and bare frame, and repaint everything. So every nook and cranny is the color change color. And honestly, none of those colors on that list really like made me think, that is what I want to do with this car. I want to tear it all the way down to make it all red. I'm down to wrap it all candy apple red or neon green or anything like that, but it needs to have one solid color underneath. And the most valuable color to keep it underneath is actually the color that it came in, which is obviously the Alpine silver metallic. Um, so that one, at least in the beginning, is gonna win no matter what. We gotta paint this entire car. That silver color, we're gonna respray the entire thing. And that way every nook and cranny and everything on this car will all be the same color. And then if we wanna wrap it a more exciting color afterwards, we're free to do that. But underneath, it all needs to be one solid color to be a proper restoration. So it's a bit of a spoiler. But in the short term, it, the, the, the Alpine Silver Metallic will win out because you gotta paint it and then you gotta let that paint off gas for I think at least two weeks. Because if you, if you wrap over fresh paint, when you go to peel that wrap up, your paint's gonna come with it in some spots. So it's gotta be at least silver in the beginning, but I'm still down to look at any color of other wraps. You guys let me know your recommendations in the comments and then we could wrap it and have some fun with it. And the cool thing about wraps is if we change our mind and we wanna change it into a different color, if we wanna do red for six months and then do blue for six months, it's cheap. I mean, it's relatively very inexpensive and you can really change the color of a car and have a lot of fun with it. So I'm very pro wrap these days. I'm like a huge fan of wrapping. Although that being said, we are painting this car, so. <laughs> because it's just the right thing to do. All right, guys, that is a wrap on our test drive and our color conversation. Sorry this episode took a little bit extra long to come out. I went to Europe. When I got cancer, I told you guys I was only gonna take breaks to hang out with family, friends, and travel. I traveled to Europe, I had a great time. Uh, I'm back now and we're going full steam on this thing and we're gonna be, um, well, painting. We're gonna start painting this thing in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, thanks for subscribing, thanks for liking, thanks for everything. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!